Well, I appreciate being here, and, um, and I want to th begin by thanking all of you uh, for uh, your focus on social work, uh, um, because it's kind of similar to the work that I do. Uh, it's about serving the public. Um, it's about making things better in our communities, and I can't think of anything more satisfying uh, in terms of a career than, uh, than that. Um, yeah, you won't make a lot of money, probably, <laughs> but um, I think you will uh, end up making a difference. And I think that that's incredibly important in this day and age, especially what we're, with, with what we're faced with. So what I thought I would do is maybe open up with a, a few brief remarks, and then I think it's probably better to open it up to you so you can grill me on whatever you want um, and ask whatever questions or offer any comments you, uh, you want. So, um, you know, as was mentioned, I, I've been in Congress now for over 20 years. I haven't represented this area over 20 years. With redistricting, I've, I've, I've represented, I think, almost most of the state. I originally had a district that went from Worcester, where I'm from, down to Fall River, down to Dartmouth. Uh, and now I'm from Worcester to Northampton, up to Greenfield and back. So I have, uh, I've, I've come to appreciate the diversity in the state and the challenges in the state and um, uh, both in urban areas and suburban areas as well as in rural areas. So I've had a little taste of a little bit of everything. But I come to you today as somebody who I'm sure you feel the same way, who is deeply concerned about this country um, and trying to figure out how do we respond to what we see unfolding in Washington. Uh, it is maddening. Um, to turn on the TV, to pick up the newspaper, to listen to the radio, uh, and to see the stuff coming out of the White House that, uh, that has become commonplace. These crazy tweets, uh, this very incendiary language, this polarization, this ignorance, um, and policies that I think reflect the worst in our country rather than the best. Uh, and um, you know, the United States is a country born a revolution. And I, I, when I think of revolutions, I think they're ongoing. Um, you know, we, we, we just, we were constantly trying to improve ourselves. Um, and I feel now that we're in danger of moving backwards, of actually making things worse, uh, rather than, you know, pushing progress forward. Um, and it is, it is a scary time. I worry about not only the effects of the president's language uh, in the aftermath of events like Charlottesville. Um, I worry about his reaction to the terrorist attacks in Barcelona, where he's referring to a historical event that never happened. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's unnerving. Um, and I worry every, every day about his uh, saber rattling and whether we'll end up in a war in North Korea or someplace else where uh, you know, lots of innocent people will lose their lives. And so I have been trying to figure out, like, what do you do? How do, what, how do we respond? What are the, you know, I, I mean, is it hopeless? Do we just say the hell with it? I mean, what's meaningful resistance? How do you, you know, how do you build movements? How do you, how do you change things? How do you influence things? Um, and, um, and, I, and, and I would not be still in Congress. And I don't think you would be uh, studying what you're studying if you didn't believe that you could make a difference, if you didn't believe that people coming together can, could actually change the direction of this country. And I think that's, the, that's what has to happen right now. And the way we deal with change, especially in light of what's happening in Washington, um, I think is showing up, I think is raising your voices. And it's not just you know having a a platform on the national level where you could be heard by millions of people, um, it's right here in your own community. I mean, I'm now at the point where when I go to my mother's uh, house for Thanksgiving, or my, if my uncle's there and he's spouting his usual, you know, diatribes about immigration and about Trump, I, I, I no longer am silent. I correct the record. Drives my mother crazy, but I correct the record. Um, it begins at that level. When I walk into a coffee shop and I hear people saying things that I know are wrong, I correct the record. They may not like it, but I'm correcting the record. Because left unchallenged, then more and more people believe this stuff. You know, we're in Massachusetts, 
You know, we have a pretty progressive delegation in Congress. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm calling friends that I went to college with and I, I went to high school with who live in other states and pleading with them to write their members of Congress and their senators about some of the issues uh, that concern me. You know, I'm getting them to donate to candidates that are progressive minded, that are going to take a different approach than some of the people uh, that are currently representing uh, places in this country. I'm trying to help ex build a movement like one person at a time. You know, I'm showing up to almost every demonstration I can because I know one thing, and that is, uh, in Donald Trump's mind, crowd size matters. Um, it drives him nuts uh, to see so many people um, resisting, so many people showing up to demonstrations. More people showed up to the Women's March in Washington than to his inauguration. I mean, I know that bothers him, but I want him to know that, uh, I, want him to, I want him to be bothered, because I want him to know that people object to what's going on. Uh, and so, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, it's using the social, it's using social media creatively. It's, it's writing letters to the editor. It's calling up to radio shows, even right-wing radio shows, um, and offering a different point of view. Because um, one of the things I have I've come to appreciate over the years is that, you know, uh, when people used to say things uh, about the president or about, I mean, I do a lot of work on hunger and food insecurity, I'll give you an example, when people used to kind of denigrate the SNAP program. You know, I, I, they would say things that were so outrageous that I said, you know what, who the hell's gonna believe that, right? It's just crazy, you know? And now I regret the fact that I wasn't more vocal in setting the record straight. Uh, and so we have to challenge those things. And we have to understand that organizing is an effective tool to move politics in this country. And organizing is hard work. It's not just, let me express my opinion. You know, it is going door to door. It is talking to people. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not easy and it takes time, but that's how you change things. And you look at the great movements in this country, I mean, from civil rights to the anti-war movement, they didn't, it didn't just happen. You know, it, it, it's good people, like-minded people came together, they organized, you know, and, and, they, and they fought for something different. Um, you know, and things changed. They haven't changed as much as we want, but things progressed. Um, and they wouldn't have if people didn't push. My, one of my closest friends in Congress is John Lewis, uh, who, a uh, great civil rights leader, marched in Selma, you know, been arrested, I think, like a hundred times. Um, and, uh, you know, and he is one of the most hopeful people that I know. You know, as sad as he is, about what's happening right now, I mean, he won't give up. You gotta keep on pushing, you gotta keep on moving. And I believe, I, I believe that. You know, there was a great uh, journalist, if you Google him, you'll, you probably don't, he's not a common uh, name that everybody learns about now, but a great journalist uh, during the 50s and 60s named I.F. Stone. Um, and he stood up to the McCarthy era, and he stood up to, you know, the uh, excesses of the CIA, and and uh, wrote eloquently against the war in Vietnam. And uh, I had the chance to meet him uh, shortly after I got out of college, and I think he was in his late 80s or th at the time. And uh, Ronald Reagan was president, and I was really kind of like depressed, like, ugh, you know, there's no future here. And he, he pushed back very, you know, strong uh, on, my, on my remark, and he says, you know, you, you, you got to know you can change things. Uh, and he said, you know, if somebody had told me in the early 1950s that Joe McCarthy would be exposed for the fool and the demagogue that he was, you know, I, I'm not sure I would have believed you, but he was. If someone would have told me in the early 1960s that in the 1970s we would expose the excesses of the CIA um, and we would learn about all the kind of covert, crazy, nasty things we were doing all around the world. I'm not sure I would have believed you. He says, but it happened. Um, and he went on through a whole litany of examples. And then he said, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of advice. 
He says, remember this, if you urinate on a stone long enough, you'll make an indentation. And I've never forgotten that, you know? And, um, and there's, there's wisdom in those words. So I just wanna, I just wanna, I just, I just wanna just kind of conclude my opening here by simply saying is that this is a time, yeah, for us to be concerned and for us to be, you know, frustrated and angry, but it's not, it's, this is not a moment uh, for us to pull the shade because people are counting on us and people are counting on you to actually, to resist, to change things, to make things better. And I believe, really strike to tell this to every audience I speak to, whether it's young people or old people, you know, 10 years from now, people are gonna ask you, what did you do? What did you do to stop this madness? Um, and I, I want to be able to predict that we could all say that we stood up and we fought back um, and we made a difference. Not just in ridding this country of the uh, man who was in the White House, but in changing our politics in this country and, and getting money out of our political system, you know, and empowering average people um, and tackling issues like hunger and poverty and dealing with issues of racism and sexism and you know, all the other discriminatory and bigoted realities that exist not only here in this country and around the world. You know, that around the world we were not the warmongers, we were the peacemakers. That we led an effort to abolish nuclear weapons, that we, 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 we took on the challenge of global hunger and extreme poverty and we made a, a difference. We tried to take those issues on. Um, those, are the, those are the things that I, I think uh, we need to address uh, in the, uh, in the years ahead, and I, and I hope that we will, and I trust that we will. So anyway, that's my opening, is we could talk about whatever you want to talk about.